Hello to everyone watching at home. It's Nick Vujicic here. I am so blessed to call New Life Oxnard our family's home church. And we've been going here for several years and just want to say a big hello and thank you to all the people uh, serving here at the church, even during this COVID-19 to, to, to pivot the way that you've done online. Can you guys just at home, let's just support the church and say thank you, Jesus, for the team and the church. Amen. Wherever you're watching from, welcome. If this is your first time tuning into New Life Oxnard, welcome to the family of God. I just wanted to encourage you today. Pastor Steve asked me if I would come and share a word of encouragement, of uplifting. And uh, as we know, COVID-19 is definitely unique in many, many ways. Uh, the world's never seen anything like this. The world's never heard anything like this. And I just want to open up with a, a couple thoughts before we get into it, um, you know, about this. It, it's not just social distancing and washing your hands like crazy like I am, but it's understanding as well how exciting the times are that we are alive. You know, for us to know that, that, that this is a moment that the world's never seen. And it's, it's quite a moment for us to be self-reflecting, sure, mentally, sure, emotionally, while our emotions and mental health is like crazy right now with our kids at home, and uncertainty to the maximum, just very, very different stresses that we've really experienced ever before. But really it's our spiritual health that, that really determines how we are anchored on the rock how we are anchored through the storm. And, and you know, I, I, I wanna open up before we open up with prayer real quick to ask God to bless His Word this, this, uh, this day. But you know, I thought to myself and I brought it up to my family. It's interesting how many times someone says, you know, your boat needs an anchor in the storm. Well, first of all, if you're caught in a storm, in a boat and you're moving somewhere, the last thing you wanna do is put the anchor down. Now, if you're at shore, sure, you need that anchor to make sure that you don't wash up on shore. Does that make sense? But when you're going through a storm, it feels like it's a maybe a better illustration. We were going, we had routine, we had rhythm, we had plans, we were doing our seven day routine. We go to church on Sunday. Now we're watching church in our PJs. What's up with that? And everyone understands that this is just the new norm for now. We hope that COVID passes. But right now, when we look at COVID saying that that will pass, this ain't the first storm we've ever had. And the Christians again and again and again who are brought up in the Bible come to the faithfulness of God as they have persevered. Every storm that comes has come to pass. And right now, it feels like we can't just, you know, even though the world has stopped, we feel the, the move and the urge to, to keep on going. And, and what I wanna think of is our life as a boat. You know when the wind changes and, and the, the waves toss and turn like crazy, it's pivoting our sails in a different direction so that we stay on course. What's really amazing to me is that what COVID-19 has done is really reveal the stripping away of what we considered as normal to really reveal how much we need God, how much we need Him every day. And I don't know about you, and this message is not really for those of you who don't know God, it's more of an encouragement for those of you who do know of God. And I wanna read from James chapter two to encourage you in your walk, sorry, James chapter one, encouraging your walk with God to really have a, a thorough look and self-reflection of our health and our spiritual health, our walk with God. Let's pray. Lord God, we come before You today and we do indeed pray for the government. We pray that You would bless the world. We thank You, Lord, for a cure for the coronavirus. We pray that this storm would co come and go quicker. Lord God, we pray for anyone who's right now fearful of the future, the uncertainty of if we're gonna have a job after this, small business owners who've already decided that we just can't survive this storm. Lord, we thank You that no matter what storm we have, whether it be financial or 
just uncertainty on all levels. We thank You, Lord, that we don't know what tomorrow holds, but we know who holds tomorrow. And we thank You, Lord, for Your faithfulness. And during this storm, Holy Spirit, would You breathe into the sails, Lord God, to help us continue our path in focusing on, on You and fixing our eyes on You through the storm. In Jesus' Name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen. You know, for me, when I uh, was knowing uh, about uh, Reverend Billy Graham's last address that was broadcasted to America, I think the title was My Warning to America. And I wanted to know what would Reverend Billy Graham say? And it was nothing different than when I was able to meet with him face to face with my fiance at the time, who's my wife. And he said, preach the gospel, preach the gospel, preach the gospel. His love for the lost, his heart for the weary, those who had no hope. I mean, for those of us who have a faith in God, this is the time where we not only persevere and have a health check spiritually for ourselves, but we'll get into it at the end. This is the time to reach out to your family and friends like never before, including you young people who don't think it's cool, like it is cool to come here in this church building to tune into the weekly services. This is the time where your friends are asking the biggest spiritual questions they've ever asked. They actually might give you time to talk to you about Jesus for the first time. You actually might be saying for the first time, well, I'm not so busy to share my story. Remember, our history is His story to share. Amen. And this is the time that God has opportunities in these times of difficulties. And, and remember to be the hands and feet of God. But what I want to talk about tonight and today, sorry, is you. Where are you with God? Where are we? Where do we know we can have hope in? In James chapter 1, we're going to read verse 2 to 12 in the NIV. Consider it pure joy, my brothers and sisters, whenever you face trials of many kinds, because you know that the testing of your faith produces perseverance. Will you say that word at your house? Perseverance. Very good. Let perseverance finish its work so that you may be mature and complete not lacking anything. If any of you lacks wisdom, you should ask God who gives generously to all without finding fault and it will be given to you. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea blown and tossed by the wind. That person should not expect to receive anything from the Lord. Such a person is double-minded and unstable in all they do. Believers in humble circumstances. Anyone in a humble circumstance? Believers in humble circumstances ought to take pride in their high position. But the rich should take pride in their humiliation since they will pass away like a wildflower. For the sun rises with scorching heat and withers the plant. Its blossom falls and its beauty is destroyed. In the same way, the rich will fade away even while they go about their business. Blessed is the one who perseveres. That's is, that is the title of today's message. Blessed or blessed is the one who perseveres under trial having stood the test, that person will receive the crown of life that the Lord has promised to those who love Him. Now, does that mean, before we get into the points here, does that mean that there are no rich people on earth that are going to heaven? No. What we are talking about here is the context of those who have taken a hit financially, but it's okay, they're gonna be okay. Their hope is in, well, a better economic future later down the track. Because those people have put their hope, their confidence, and their trust in their intelligence, in their plan, in their moves and in investments, and money. Money is quite a lot of the world's post of security, anchor. Or, or, or the strength of the sales. But we all know that 
money comes and goes. We all know that if you put your happiness in temporary things, your happiness will be temporary. You get money and then you get a little bit more and it's still not enough. But you know, it'd be great to be rich and a believer to know that everything we have is God's. Most of us though find ourselves right now in COVID-19, as it says, believers in a humble circumstance. Having no arms and legs, let me tell you, it's humbling still today. I'm 37. It still is humbling to wake up every morning and know that you're dependent on someone else. For me, that's humbling. For me today as a speaker to have 65% of the motivational uh, 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 speaking engagements around the world cancel in six weeks. It's humbling. It's humbling to, to have conversations internally. Our ministry at Life Without Limbs is Praise God, untouched. Praise God for the people who support us, those people who pray for us. And we've pivoted in the ministry in such a way that, that we've accelerated our vision and, and, and seeing God's vision do a lot more stuff online in multi-languages. And actually in the last week, about half a million people have heard the gospel of Jesus Christ. Our ministry is great, but, but all the living that me and my family have is not from the ministry. And to, to add it up, I went, I, I went to my literary agent and I said, so, you know, uh, I, I, I think I have another book to write. We've been talking about it for six months, but it's like, hey, can we now talk about that new book? And guess what happened? It kind of feels like every industry right now is just on standstill. And it doesn't matter who you are. It doesn't matter how strong you are in the Lord. I thank God that He puts us as believers in humble situations and circumstances. Why? Why? Why do I say that? Well, first of all, the Bible says, I think 366 times, so one for each day in a leap year as well. Fear, what? Fear not, F-E-A-R, false evidence appearing real. We walk by, not by sight, not by feeling. We walk by faith, F-A-I-T-H, full assurance in the heart, knowing that God will never allow His servants or His children to die of starvation. We know that God is a provider. We know that God's grace is sufficient. We know that trials and tribulations will come and we don't have to be surprised. Are we really, really surprised? Nothing surprises me anymore. Nothing. It's interesting. My dad, when I was a teenager, he said, you know, Nick, in the 1980s, I, I, when I was told, he said even in 1970s, when we were talking about in Bible study about how someone would claim to be Jesus on earth. He's like, how could anyone say that they're Jesus on earth? And in the 90s, we found that there were some people on earth who said they were Jesus and started cults and stuff. He said, I, I never thought that that would be possible. And now today we know that Revelation says that, that there is gonna be a point before Jesus' return, that there will be a one world government order, that there will be a chip on our wrist and our forehead that you will not be able to buy or sell or trade without that chip. We know what Revelation says and we believers yearn for His coming. How exciting it is that we've never seen the world get stopped in the tracks of life in an exciting way from a spiritual point, we must hold on to the fact that we shouldn't be surprised. I wouldn't be surprised, sorry to get political, but I wouldn't be surprised if the World Health Organization is one of the biggest organizations that actually is larger than China, Russia, UN and EU all put together. You think every organization is clean and pure? with no self motives. Look at the fear that we have in this world. I'm not pointing fingers at what happened and how this all happened, but from a Christian's point of view, isn't it just a little exciting? It is for me. Who would have thought that a virus could put everyone at a standstill? No one could imagine it. 
All I'm saying is, I'm not saying Jesus come back next week. I'm not saying Jesus come back in my lifetime. But I know that if He doesn't come back in my lifetime, I know whom I believe in. And I am persuaded. I am persuaded to see things in the Bible that are coming to pass. And it's exciting to me. And if I live up to 60, that's only what, 23 years away, I get to see Jesus. We're citizens of heaven passing through and the only treasure that we store up there are the beautiful, beautiful crowns that we lay at the feet of Jesus. And we get to hug the people in heaven that God used through us. God used us to tell them about the love of God. That when we get there, there is no devil, there is no Satan, demons, no power, principalities, or powers of darkness. We're gonna live with God forever and ever and ever and ever. And every human being that you know has a soul that there's something missing deep within their soul. And it's Jesus. And God can use you to let them know now. You used to say you're too busy to call them. Now are you too busy? It's interesting. All your friends and, and family who don't know Jesus, they've been worshiping celebrities. They've been worshiping this. They've been worshiping that. And it's all sports is a religion for some. So many people put their hope and their own value in things that don't exist, that just at a snap of a finger, I can't do it. But you know what I'm saying, bang, gone, done. But Jesus remains, sure, church is closed, but man, I get to have church with God every single day. I read my Bible and I'm not afraid. Is it scary? Yes. But we know God is in control. Could, could God allow you to lose your job, yes. Would it be the first person that a Christian loses their job? No. Does God still have a plan? Yes. He causes all things to come together for the good for those who love Him, who've been called according to His purpose. Amen? Don't doubt that God has a purpose in this too for you. He's not the one causing the pain or the fear, but what the enemy tried to use for bad, God will turn into good if you continue to persevere. Even though I find myself and we may find ourselves in humbled circumstances, we know that we can have comfort and strength. Not a pride pride, but pride, as the Bible says. Knowing that I'm a child of God, my Lord, my Saviour, King of kings, Lord of lords, has already defeated the grave has already defeated the enemy and He lives in me. And those who persevere in the Bible, they see the faithfulness of God. Look at Job. Look at anyone in the Bible. They persevered and saw the faithfulness of God. Persevere, my brothers and sisters, amen. Maybe right now, the second point I wanna bring up is not just that we shouldn't be surprised and that we should not be feared, uh, fearful, but to stop and listen. Do you know that my wife and I, um, she's my greatest gift after salvation itself. And real quick, once a month, we ask each other three questions. Say that, three questions. We ask three questions. Honey, what is something that I'm doing that you don't want me to do anymore? That's number one. Honey, what is something that I am doing that you want me to keep on doing? And thirdly, honey, what is something that I'm not doing that you want me to start doing? Now she can't turn around to me and say, well, do the dishes. You see, it's a good thing to have no arms, no legs sometimes. But what we gotta understand is this, is it's a relationship with God, our Heavenly Father. Has God absolutely just now stopped you in your tracks and actually got rid of every excuse why you are not on your knees for more than five minutes a day, 10 minutes a day? Have you wrote down your prayer yet? How many people have you actually prayed for? Have you actually prayed for your country? It's really interesting, very interesting to me. Second, uh, Second Chronicles 7.14 says, 
if my people humble themselves and come and pray to me and they ask me for the forgiveness of their sins, I will forgive them and I will heal their land. It's interesting that I have not seen one nation yet. Not one. Not just call a national day of prayer, but a national day of repentance. That is the bridge. Come to me and pray to me and humble yourself and ask me for forgiveness of your sins. Not just pray that coronavirus gets a cure. Not just pray for this and that. Pray for the sins of your nation. I was on a plane ride one day and I wrote 106 different ways in how the human being can suffer. I have not written down the sins of America, but one of them is 40 million abortions. One of them is 100,000 churches that exist in America with a $480 billion debt for buildings that are all empty right now. And we have 450,000 children waiting for a foster home and 100,000 children waiting to be adopted in America. Is that a sin? I don't know, you tell me. It's interesting that we haven't in America. America, wake up, here is my warning. If you don't wake up now, when will you? If this is not the time where the Baptists work with the AOG and the AOG don't work, we'll work with Foursquare and all these denominations come. I really call out the American church right now. Can we please? Have all the major churches at one hour tune in. I'm calling out to Franklin Graham. I'm calling out to Greg Laurie. I'm calling out to Francis Chan, Craig Rochelle, um, all the, Jack Hibbs. I've already talked to Jack about this. I want you to know something. This is the time, this is my fe most fearful thing about coronavirus. It's not how many people are gonna die. It's not about how many people are gonna lose their job. Will this wake up America? Will this bring 10 million people to their knees in one hour in America and ask God for the forgiveness of our sins? Because if we do not do this, you know what happens when you go and witness poverty and then you think to yourself, I will never be the same again. And you come back and guess what happens when the storm's gone? Two weeks later, you get back into comfortability. America, this is my warning, stop and listen. If we as a country, if we as a body do not come together now and we get on our knees and not just pray for our country, Repent, 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 and God will heal. Amen. For you, stop and listen. God, what is something that I'm not doing that you want me to do? What is something? that I'm doing that you want me to stop doing? What is something that you want me to do, but keep on doing it? Stop and listen. Third thing, trust and obey, for there's no other way than to be happy in Jesus is to trust and obey. Are you trusting God today? What's your excuse? for opening up the Word of God with your family at the dining table. So many of us yearn to have family time and now we can't wait for coronavirus. Are you kidding me? These are your children. This is beautiful for the millennial generation because we've talked about stuff, about trials and tribulations that will come and the millennial generation, I'm gonna have this when I want it, how I want it now. All of a sudden they see what the world could be and what their confidence has been put in. But then they look to you. You are the first people that they look to. How are you dealing with this? Has Nick had some mental numbness? Yes. Has Nick had some panic? Yes. But I know that my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. 
I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. I'm Christ, the solid rock I stand. All other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. Do you stand on the rock? It's time. It's time that God would help you see your friends and family who don't know Jesus, who are not on the rock. Do you see them sinking? But what am I gonna say? Who cares? Open your mouth and God will speak through you. Call that friend, tell him your story. Tell them your testimony. Tell them what Jesus did for you. Tell them that God loves them. Tell them that all this stuff is sinking sand. But Christ is solid rock we can stand on. Trust and obey. Hallelujah. Let's pray. Lord Jesus, we come before you and we pray right now. that your Holy Spirit would breathe in the brethren, in all the denominations, who knows that Jesus is Lord. We pray for a unified body like never before. We pray for the church. Forgive America of our sins. We repent in Jesus' name of our sins. We pray that a unified effort of this time where everyone is quarantined, to stop and listen and find out what have we not done as a nation that we must still do. We pray for the government, we pray for the circumstances, but we thank You, Lord, that as humble as our circumstances are, that You will carry us when we cannot walk. Help us to trust and obey. Help us to know that You're with us. Lord, for anyone who is scared right now, Comfort us. Comfort us with your word. Some of us can't even get through an hour without a panic attack. Lord, we know that we can't stop emotion, but help us to hold every thought captive and bring it to the word of God that we may be liberated and free to come back to you, depend on you, lean on you like never before. Father, bless our families. Father, as abuse in home and pornographic addictions are on a spike because so much is going on in our homes right now. We pray for healing in the homes. We pray that your hand would stretch out to, to those people in need through us as we call, as we see how they're doing. Be a listening ear to somebody. Tell them how you changed our life. Lord, we pray that you would move us to write down five names of people that we're gonna call this week to see how they're doing, share our story, give us the courage. If not now, when? And we thank you, Lord, that you would continue to know your word, hold on to your word and write your promises on the tablet of our hearts. In Jesus' name and all God's people said, amen. Everyone watching, I just wanna tell you that I love you very, very much. May God bless you this week. And at Life Without Limbs, please check out the website, lifewithoutlimbs.org. We now have four different programs of ministry. Um, we just want you to know more information. You can text us for more information. We've got a prayer and encouragement ministry. We have a prison ministry. We have a live outreach events ministry. And lastly, we have a digital ministry. If there's any way that my ministry, our ministry that I founded, Life Without Limbs, with our board, with our team, we wanna love on you. Check it out, lifewithoutlimbs.org or simply text us at the number 66866. Text the word Nick. I love you guys so much. May God bless you. Keep strong because we know that greater is He who is in us than anything and He in the world. God bless you.